Good morning, YouTube. High Mileage Rider here. And if you've clicked on this video, you're interested in a review of the 2021 Triumph Tiger 900 GT Pro. Let's get at it. Okay, we're back, and today's a very exciting day for me. We're going to get to review the Triumph Tiger 900 GT Pro, the 2021 edition. I've been looking forward to reviewing this bike since it came out last year. Um, unfortunately, because of COVID, there were no test ride days, so we were unable to get our hands on one. So, being a responsible motorcyclist and friend, I just convinced one of my buddies to buy one. So today we are on Heath's new Triumph Tiger 900 GT Pro. So the first thing that I notice when I get on a bike is the seating position. You know, how do my hands line up, my shoulders, what's the seating position like, uh, where are my feet, what kind of uh, position is my back in, and I gotta tell you, this is a really, really nice bike. For me, because I'm six feet tall and about 210 pounds, um, I noticed that compared to my Super Tenere, it is uh, a little bit more compact. Uh, that's not a bad thing, just what I get used to. Um, my feet are a little bit more behind my bum, and my feet are at a little bit more of a sporty angle than on my Super Tenere. So I would have to say as a taller rider, this would be a more sporty position. Uh, the handlebar height was a little bit low before for me, but Heath has put on the Rocks Bar Risers, which has raised the bars up and brought them back uh, to himself. I won't quote numbers because I don't remember off the top of my head, but uh, it is much more comfortable now. The seat itself is very comfortable. I've had a chance to ride this bike for probably a couple hundred K already before this review. Uh, we were waiting for Heath to be done his, um, waiting for his break-in period to be done before we um, took this bike out to do the review. And as you can see, it's supposed to be a beautiful sunny day today. As I said, the seat is very comfortable. It also is heated. You get a heated driver's seat and a heated passenger seat. The passenger has their own separate control to turn the heat on and off just underneath their seat and the driver's control is just on the left hand stock. So now that we've talked about the seating position, the comfort of the seat, uh, the position of your feet in relation to your hips and your body, my back is quite upright on this bike which is awesome. I also find now with the bar risers on it that when I stand up the uh, bar reach is uh, perfect now and uh, it'll be very comfortable for riding off-road. The mirrors on this bike are fantastic. Uh, once we get up to highway speed you'll see that there's almost no vibration through them. They are very clear and they're only covered on the inside maybe one quarter by my shoulders but they give me a fantastic view of what's behind me. Uh, Triumph has done a very, very good job. Instrumentation. As you can see, we have a full color 7 inch TFT display and I gotta tell you, Triumph does an amazing job with their TFTs. Uh, it's bright, it is clear, it is concise and you can see it says caution, low air temperature, risk of surface ice because right now it's about 5 degrees but it is supposed to go up to 20 degrees today could be a great day for riding. There are numerous adjustments with the TFT display, none of which I'll be showing you when I ride because that might be a little bit dangerous as I am still getting used to this bike. But as you can see there is a snowflake in the corner showing the air temperature is low. Below that we have our coolant temperature, we have our clock, it is 821. In the middle we have our speed, 67 kilometers an hour. Below that you can see that we are in fourth gear. 
On the left hand side is our gas gauge. Below that is our temperature outside, 3.5. My bike said 5, I'll be optimistic with that one. Beside that you can see the Bluetooth connectivity uh, symbol. You can Bluetooth connect your uh, music through this, uh, through this bike if you did not have a Senna. So along with the screen you have multiple choices of the way the information is displayed to you. This is the one that Heath has chosen, so I'm not going to mess with it. You can also customize your screen for what information the bike gives you, what it displays to you. There are different color options. It has multiple driving roads between road, curvy, enduro, rain, all those such things. Uh, the bike also has um, Linked ABS, traction control, which is switchable off in the enduro mode or not in the enduro mode. It has a quick shifter, uh, as I said, heated grips, heated seats. Uh, one thing to take note of with the uh, TFT display, and this is something we unfortunately learned the hard way, is the TFT display does take a lot of power to run. Most bikes, um, and this bike can probably do it as well, we just don't have it set up that way, but uh, I know on my bike you can display the volts on the bike. Uh, most bikes when you're running, the bike is between 13.5 and 14.2 volts. This bike must have over 11.5 volts power in the battery in order to start the bike. That we went into a restaurant uh, before our second COVID lockdown, or third COVID lockdown, I've uh, lost track now. And uh, we went in for about a half an hour to have breakfast uh, before our ride, and he left his LED lights on. So when we came out to the bike, while the TFT display would turn on, the bike would not start. Because we drained enough power from the battery that the bike could not start. So be aware of that. With this bike, the draw from the TFT and the fact that it has so many computers running the bike greatly affects power consumption on this bike. So if you go to a uh, LED driving light or set two sets, let's say, of LED driving lights or any other items, heated gear, uh, you're using a tire pump in your cigarette lighter, any of those things, be aware of the power draw. You may want to consider putting a CAN bus system uh, for controlling power on this bike. Otherwise, you may find yourself dead in the water. On a similar note, just so you know, you can push start this bike and bump it in third gear and get it to start if the battery is dead, because we successfully did that. What's the bike like on the highway? Its highway manners are impeccable. I'm traveling here at 110 kilometers an hour, and this thing is rock solid, stable. The wind protection is very good. The only thing is I'd like the windscreen to be just a little bit wider. Um, the flip in the front, I can see over it, and uh, it does not obstruct my vision. It makes a very clean path of air over my helmet. I have a adventure helmet on with a peak a sun peak and I get no buffeting, no turbulence, but I do get more wind on my chest than on my Super Tenere, uh, simply because it's not quite as wide and these little winglets are uh, much smaller. Uh, handlebar vibration on the highway at 110 kilometers an hour is non-existent. Nice and smooth, the mirrors are smooth, there is no vibration in the foot pegs. I will be back on the highway in just a few minutes here. As an aside, you can see that when I'm stopped and have the clutch in, it displays that I am in first gear. So yeah, this bike is very, very comfortable on the highway. It will be an amazing mile muncher uh, for touring. And only time will tell what it's like off-road. Luggage capacity. Heath went with the Triumph branded luggage, which is either made by GV or SW Motec, we're not sure. The uh, dealership didn't actually know 
and uh, we weren't really that concerned about it to look it up but he's got a 37 liter case on the left and the right sides as well as a 32 liter top case which holds his uh, full full face helmet modular with a peak and he's got lots of room for storage he has an under the seat usb connection for charging a phone if you wanted and of course as i said bluetooth connectivity so lots of luggage options lots of places to strap down um, wet dry bags if you needed extra space so what is the triumph tiger 900 gt pro like to ride in the city well it has very very nice city manners it's very flickable very light as we said uh, earlier it's about 436 pounds dry about 470 pounds wet it's not too big of an adventure bike uh, like my Super Tenere is uh, 600 plus pounds uh, quite wide with the bags on it uh, I don't think I'd want to try filtering with this bike with the uh, stock Triumph bags on it as it might be still a little bit wide but it's very nice uh, in town slow speed the clutch is beautiful the uh, throttle is very nice the seating position makes it very easy to get your foot down at a light visibility is wonderful one of the things i really like about uh, adventure touring bikes is that you sit up nice and high so it gives you a much better visualization when you're riding it's a very, very nice bike for riding in the city at slow speeds. It is very, very well behaved. Okay, here we are. We've stopped on the side of the road to give you guys a close-up view of the 2021 Tiger 900 GT Pro. So let's go through a few specs here. The jewel of this bike is the 888cc inline three-cylinder. This bike puts out a lot of power, a lot of torque, or it feels like it. By the numbers, it has 94 horsepower at 8,750 RPM, and it has 64 foot-pounds of torque at 7,250 RPM. It's a beautiful, beautiful motor, pulls beautifully on the highway, uh, very responsive. As you can see, the final drive is a chain drive. It has a six-speed transmission with a wet clutch, and we have a quick shifter. The bike has a tubular steel frame, and if we work our way to the front of the bike, you'll be able to see that we have the front tire being a 190-19 in size. The rear tire is a 150-70R17. In the front here, we have twin 320 millimeter floating discs with the Brembo Stylema brakes. And in the rear, we have a single 255 millimeter disc. At the front of the bike, the suspension is uh, absolutely amazing. It works very, very well for this bike. It's a Marzucci 45 millimeter upside down fork. And it has a manual adjustment with 7.08 inches of travel. On the rear, with a really nice red spring, we also have the Marzucci electronic rear suspension with 6.7 inches of travel. On this bike, we have a 20 liter gas tank. And as I said, we have the 7-inch TFT display, which is absolutely amazing. Good morning, Tiger. Now, the beauty of this bike uh, for Heath and for anyone who's shorter is that the 900 GT Pro comes as a lowered suspension. And then you also have two different seat heights which it's adjustable for. You simply put your key in the hole, take the seat off, and there are little feet underneath that you can adjust to have two different seat heights. The seat height will vary from 31.8 inches to 32.7.
The lowered suspension, as I say, is a really good option for shorter riders. If you're 5.7, five, 5.8, five, you'll still be able to flat foot the bike. The dry weight of this bike is 436 and a half pounds. Uh, they told us at Triumph with a full tank of gas, all your fluids, and with your saddlebags on, and full, you'll be looking around 470 pounds. The luggage is keyed to the ignition, so it's all one key. And it is the Triumph branded luggage. I'm not sure if that's made by SW Motec or GV or Touratech, but it's a really good system. It's 37 liters per side and a 32 liter top case. Now accessories that this bike came with when Heath bought it were the standard Triumph LED lights, the radiator covers for the split radiator, the skid plate, it also came with the headlight cover, the windshield with the flip, hand guards, it came with the racks for the bags, but you had to buy the bags separately. So it came loaded with a lot of stuff. This is a excellent, excellent motorcycle for anyone who's looking for a middleweight adventure touring bike. Uh, let's get back on the road and I'll give you my final thoughts. So what are my final opinions or final impressions of the Triumph 900 GT Pro? This is an absolutely amazing bike. Uh, I know that Keith got it because he's a little vertically challenged at only 5'8", 5'9", and he wanted an adventure bike where he could flat foot on it. And he picked this bike specifically because it has a lower suspension than the 1200. It also has two different seat height options. Uh, it's very quick and nimble. Again, this only weighs 470 pounds wet. So power to weight ratio is really good. It has a 20 liter fuel tank, so the mileage on it is really good. It's very comfortable, very flickable, uh, good wind protection, comfortable ergonomics, uh, beautiful TFT display. Again, just remember your power consumption needs. This is an absolutely beautiful bike. Pricing on this bike in Canada, in Alberta, as this bike sits, uh, it is about $25,500 out the door. One of the things that I really like about this bike, it is not controlled by key fob. It still has a good old fashioned key. One less thing to break down when you are riding. So yeah, this bike is amazing. I would highly recommend it for any shorter riders who want to get an adventure bike. Uh, as long as that price fits your price point that you're looking for, you will not be disappointed with this bike. It is a, it's a beautiful bike. It's almost too good for heat, but uh, don't tell them I told you that. Anyways, we'll see you in the next video. Uh, I'll see who else of my friends I can convince to buy a new bike so we can do some more bike reviews. And until next time, keep your right hand cranked and the rubber side down.